Hello everybody and welcome back to the Limits Pokemon TCG chat. Today we're gonna have some talk about the Anaheim regionals as well as the Sheffield regionals coming up and perhaps the Melbourne internationals as well. So I'm here with Philip Dostoevsky from Limitless TCG and Nico Alabas with, from Limitless TCG as well. My name is Jesper Eriksson. I'm from Limitless TCG as well. And I think just <laughs> Philip's going to kick this off. Yeah, of course. Well, um, Anaheim was pretty interesting, to be honest. Um, Sun and Moon didn't seem to have a great impact on the meta game there. Pretty much uh, the same decks were successful, apart from some random exceptions. But yeah. Tell me, guys, what do you think about the meta game? Did you expect something like that, or yeah? Um, I I, I didn't expect too much from the testing I I done with the Sun and Moon format. I I think that the old decks just had put in something like new, like Taurus or something like Eveltal did, but I don't think that Waterbox and Laurentis and stuff could keep up with the current meta game. So it was only just about tech cards and stuff that would be put in decks. That that's what I thought would be before the event, and uh, that proved me right, because you saw that uh, Turbo Dark won, and Evil Tall had a great showing as well. Yeah, actually, the pretty much uh, three most up, uh, most hyped up cards from Sun and Moon are Umbreon GX, uh, aside from Taurus, obviously, uh, Umbreon GX, Durantis, and Decidueye, and uh, Umbreon is, for the current format, is really weak, especially with uh, decks like Turbo Dark and Ivelta. They can simply counter Umbreon with taking in Taurus because um, even without a Fighting Fury Belt, Umbreon has no chance to one hit knockout Taurus and with a Fighting Fury Belt you actually have to hit it two times. So um, Taurus can actually Mad Bull GX you once to take out one Umbreon and actually rage for 200 damage uh, or actually 210 because of Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, on the next one, so you're giving up four prizes just to potentially knock out the Taurus. Uh, so Umbreon is immediately out of like contestants for uh, good cards. Same is actually for Laurentis, because Laurentis uh, also gets very uh, hard countered by Taurus, because it also can't knock it out unless it has four or even five uh, energies. So you also can Mad Bull for a revenge knockout, and yeah, Lapras, we actually saw the meta game. It was a lot of Vespiquen and Waterbox in a grass heavy meta. It just didn't work previously, so why would it work now? Yeah, I agree for the most part. Um, yeah, as you said, Taurus just kind of counters uh, Umbreon and Durantis because they really have a hard time playing around it. Um, I mean, Lapras does have outs against decks like Vespiquen, but it's still not great in a format with a lot of Vespiquen and stuff. So yeah, naturally it didn't do too well, this tournament, even though I think it's actually quite a good deck. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the things um, you might need to consider is that it was the first tournament of the new format. So I think it might be a factor that people kind of shied away from playing new decks because they didn't prove themselves to be effective. So it's, it was kind of a big risk to play some of the new decks because there were no tournament results to prove them good. So people just play, play the tech towers in the decks that it makes, uh, makes sense in, and that's about it. So, um, actually, we could talk about the um, top 8 deck list, or, or kind of the decks that made top 8. Yeah, but um, let's just start with, uh, um, let's see the last list. Just start with Igor Costas, or should we start with Kenny? Yeah, let's just, um, let's I don't start know. with the uh, winner deck, actually. Yeah, let's start with Kenny, uh, Kenny Britton's deck. I actually don't see... He, he didn't play Taurus in his uh, Dark Giratina. He didn't play Garbodor either, but actually cutting Garbodor in this deck made it more consistent though. So I think that was a good cut. And there was like, I don't think that Garbodor is too, too needed in this current meta as well. Uh, so he plays the standard stuff. He actually made space for Evil Tall with Oblivion Wing and uh, XP Share in his Dark Giratina. So I think there were good cuts to doing that. 
And as I see it, overall, his list looks really, really good. And um, for me, it was no surprise that Dark Ray uh, to could take this tournament. But let's start off with you, Nico. How, what do you think about the list overall? Um, yeah, it's actually surprisingly consistent um, compared to recent uh, regional or regional most regional top cards or even the international uh, list that Premovert used to uh, win the London internationals because as we saw uh, he cut a lot of consistency cards for tech cards and uh, that actually happened a lot in uh, America in recent tournaments even with uh, Greninja players although you know that Greninja is one of the most inconsistent decks we currently have and you actually have to commit a lot of resources to get it out consistently to make it work but Kenny's list is actually very very consistent it's pretty much the regular Turbo Dark list um, without Garbodor and Giratina instead for the meta we saw in Anaheim it was actually the better choice because Giratina just crushes Vespiquen so hard um, yeah so yeah, as you as you said, it's actually no surprise that Dark Dragons was able to take the tournament. Yeah, I think it was kind of a good meta call. Um, even though, I think in this interview he said he didn't really hit many other dark decks. So, yeah, well, I'm not really sure um, how this deck stands up to something like Turbo Dark with a couple of enhanced hammers or Evelta. But uh, for this meta game, it seemed to be really good. I actually also do like the list very much, especially the two XP shares that are not a natural fit for the deck um, compared to what we saw earlier. Um, also like the Olympia, um, gave a pretty good reasoning for the Olympia that like Vespiquen decks always try to license the stall against you because they have to get a turn of DC attachment. So if you don't with Chaos Wheel, you pretty much win, and with uh, the Olympia, you can ensure that. Um, only thing I don't like about the list was that he only played two Peril Cities and nothing like a kick, another Kick Jim or Delinquent. So I could see him getting problems if his opponent went first and um, reduced his bench to three because he has no outs to that. And actually, I think he needs the access to the Hooper uh, in many cases. Um, yeah, well, other than that, pretty consistent list. Well, a commentary I have to make here is probably that his matchup against Turbo Dark is actually pretty good. He can actually put pressure on with Salomon's EX, and even though they play one of two enhanced timers, still putting down double dragon energy is pretty, it's like still 40 damage. He plays XP share, he still plays max elixir, he still plays the, all the Turbo Dark stuff. So... If he just hits some uh, a few of his elixirs, it still it should still be kind of a 50-50 matchup. If not, he gets an edge because if he has the double, double dragon energies. So I I, I disagree a bit with you, Philip. There because I know the the Turbo Dogs may play enhanced Simmer, but for double dragon, just getting one of them to stick is so huge. Um, it just changes all the Turbo Dog matchup to being the same like who hits the first Lysander on Dark Ray EX basically. Yeah, but actually. Just to cut in, um, I played the matchup in uh, Leipzig, and uh, surprisingly, the matchup is actually, f for my experience, is very good for Turbo Dark, because Giratina is or Salamence even are actually a liability for the deck because um, in a regular mirror match, you have like one Dark with two uh, Darkness energies, another with two Darkness energies, active one with a few, but in this matchup, you potentially have a Giratina or Salamence with two double dragon energies and if you lose this one Giratina or Salamence you immediately use 80, uh, lose 80 damage and that's actually huge for the deck and you can't get them back with XP share so in my opinion the matchup is actually good for Turbo Dark so um, it's no surprise that he in the interview said that he didn't hit a lot of dark decks because um, from my experience the matchup uh, is actually very bad for um, dark dragons well, yeah. it depends because the deck you played in Leipzig was Dark Red Garbodor, and he and the guy I played against was Dark Tina Garbodor, so that might have a little bit of impact on that. But let's yeah, just sure. 
Yeah, let's just get, let's just get rid uh, of the double dragon energy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, I think I think the matchup should be kind of close, but um, we don't really have the testing experience to elaborate on that point. I think um, in theory it should be kind of close, but there are advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, Salamence can be a huge threat in the matchup, but then again, losing a lot of energies and relying on double dragon energies isn't really good. I don't know. Yeah. So let's just gonna we're just gonna move on to the only Decidueye GX uh, deck in top cut, and that was actually with Tunk uh, Tunk uh, John Kettler. Sorry, he played Decidueye Vile Plume with one Lugia, one Taurus, one Promo Jirachi, and three Shaman EX. So it looks like that a lot of his damage comes out from his free Shaman EX using uh, Sky Return and using his four 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 line. Uh, the Setu YGX to pull out some damage. So, what do you think about that list? Well, I mean, it's a Vaplum deck. <laughs> That's like the first thing I have to say. I don't really like Vaplum decks. They are so cancerous. Just can't really say anything good about that. It's like really streamlined, uh, streamlined trainer engine. Nothing really special. Nothing. No, not a huge uh, space to play. Or, outplay your opponent except for deciduous damage placements. But a uh, good thing about the deck is compared to other Vaplum decks, um, the main problem is always when your opponent finds a way to get the Vaplum stuck active because that's like an obvious way how you can lose playing Vaplum. Missing a floatstone, then having to evolve into Vaplum and then getting it licensed or getting it locked by Fright Knight. That's always been a huge problem. But, but with this deck you can actually Either attack with Vaplum, even though I don't think that's very likely, but you can also just um, continue to do damage with the Sidra, even though your Vaplum is active here, so your opponent doesn't get a huge benefit off of Lysandering it. Um, but yeah, it's I mean it's still a Vaplum deck, it's still very streamlined, and I still think it can be played around quite easily if you have the means to do so. You just have to get to turn one Trubbish Floodstone. I guess this deck just kind of folds. Yeah, well, they, they can still like do stuff with Taurus and Lugia and try to knock it out. Um, yeah, but then if you set up a Garbodor, you, you might still have to put the open window to set up a second Trubbish. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know which matchup against Garbodor. It, it shouldn't be too good against Garbodor, but whatever. Um, he did get top 16, though. So, this deck is still. An alright deck, but I don't see just winning tournaments off the bat. No, me neither. I think it's we actually... probably like the reason because he got some things uh, is probably more the surprise factor than actually being a good deck. So while it obviously has the um, advantages and disadvantages of a Vileplume deck, so you can win a lot of games if you just set up your Vileplume. So. Basically, every deck where you splash in Forest of Giant Plan, Consistency, and Vileplume can make top cut at a tournament. So, I don't really know if this deck is actually a better approach as at Vileplume, as for example the um, Toolbox with Jolteon and such, because you actually have more damage. But obviously, Dikido has consistent damage, even if your Vileplume gets licensed or something like this. But you also have to get out your Decidueyes on the trainer log or in your first turn. And I think it's very unlikely that you get out two Decidui and your Vileplum on your first turn. So if I were to play Vileplum deck, I'd probably stick to um, the old toolbox or even Laurentis. But they, this deck just seems too inconsistent. Both, both uh, Laurentis I, and... Actually, uh, I, actually I, think, uh, I think this is the Vileplum deck that I would play um, if I were to play a Vibram deck, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> but if I were to play a Vibram deck, uh, it would probably be, be this word because it just feels like it has a lot of a lot more win conditions than other Vibram decks. Like, you can just slice in the store something and you don't need to do anything because you do consistent damage and you can just leave the thing up there in the active and damage your opponent's bench or something. I don't know, it just really interesting, you can do shit with the CGI's GX attack or with Taurus, Taurus under Vileplum, Taurus under Vileplum lock is still so strong. Um, actually, I actually would have liked to see like Trevenant EX in this deck, I think that's a good fit, but um, 
if what you have to take into consideration is that like John wouldn't have taken the stake into the tournament like randomly he had to test a lot with the stack otherwise I don't think he would have picked it and he also had to be sure um, about the list so I don't yeah. think he was just like oh let's play Vapun deck this seems fun I, I think he knew what he was doing otherwise you would yeah. just been playing Lorenzis if he just gone with the hype but whatever let's just continue on to the next deck and we're gonna have the top 16 bubble deck uh, the list uh, from Edgar Garcia, he got 17 for the Anaheim Regionals with a water box deck. So I'm just going to go over the Pokemon only so the viewers know what I'm talking about. He's going to play three Lapras GX, one Glaceon EX. That's probably the way he's trying to counter uh, stuff like Vespa Quinn. He's going to play one Manaphy EX, one Taurus GX, one Articuno from uh, Wrong Skies, the one with uh, Delta Plus. And he's going to play one Oranguru. So no Shamans. What do you guys think? I think the list oh. is super weird. <laughs> this list okay, is let, like me, let me start off. Super let me start off. weird. Yeah, uh, I agree. But um, actually, I found out that you can play this deck with no shamans. That's possible. Like, uh, I don't want to give like advertisement here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, uh, like Mark Lutz played this deck as well. It's a very well-known German player from Complexity Card Game Pokemon, and he made a video about this deck on his channel. Mm -hmm. And he also played this deck with only one Oranguru. And um, because Lapras uh, first attack lets you draw three cards with, I think it's called Collect, um, you don't actually need to play Shaman to get consistent starts because all you need is a Lapras and the Water Energy and you basically get out of the dead draw most of the time. But still, this is not how I would build the deck because um, it, I feel like... Um, even though Ultra Ball gets you down to a few hand cuts, so you can Oranguru for one or two. I, I, I don't, I don't like Ultra Balls in here. I would just play the dive ball. Uh, if, if, but that's just me. I don't know about you. Uh, also, one mana fee seems really weird. I mean, that should be like the main retreat engine. So I also would play two mana fee. What well, he does play stuff like two Lucky Helmet and two yeah. Flood Stones. Why, why wouldn't you play a Fighting Fury Bat in this deck? I mean, I, I hate bashing decks without knowing anything about them because like that was that's what all the Americans did before testing the Philip Schulz Iwata list. But still, I, I don't see anything good in this deck list, to be honest. I mean, three enhanced him. Uh, he, this guy had to be like so sure to face so many DCE and DDE decks that he was like, okay, let's play three enhanced him. I mean, that's not two enhanced him, that's three enhanced him. And when you're putting a card like that on three, then you know you're gonna, then you know that you want to face a lot of those decks and you're pretty sure that you will. Also, like, Really, no fighting fury belt is just what blows my mind because that makes the Lapras GX Kels so much better because the second attack does 160 and with the fighting fury belt it does 170. So the fighting fury belt should be a natural fit. Also, it pushes up Lapras GX to 230 HP, which we all know, knowing what a huge yeah, tank, uh, really yeah, huge the, tank. This much. is a huge tank, especially with the uh, rough seas. And then also he doesn't. Play Rossi's only, which I think you should do, but but Paro City, like I, it's I, I don't it's know. just weird. I th I think it's I don't think this is a deck you should fear too much at the uh, stuff like Sheffield Regionals because this is just it doesn't it looks pretty much subpar. Let's say that, um, and I don't think it's worth actually looking at for uh, for the future really and be scared of I that. Mean, you could you could still build it. A bit more consistent or a bit better. I don't want to bash this guy, but you could build it better. Yeah, before before and we get then to maybe it has more more success in the future, but yeah, um, let's, I, we'll see with future expansions and such. But let's before we just kill this deck straight off, let's move on to the next deck. I think <laughs> that'll be a bit <laughs> that'll be a bit better. We're gonna look at Ryan Sablehouse's uh, Mewtwo Garbodor deck. He's gonna play four free Mewtwo line, two Trubbish, one Garbodor, two Shaman, and one Hoopa. I think that's just Igor's list. I think that's. Yeah, I, I don't really think there's too much we can talk about in this list. It's no, very, he very, doesn't... very straightforward and like super standard. There's nothing special in there. Like the regular stadium split you play, energies, Pokemon. It's pretty much. I actually believe Philip is right. It's probably just uh, exactly Igor's 
top four or second top two list yeah, yeah second from list. dallas yeah, it's probably exactly this one list it because is yeah, i but, don't see any difference so yeah you can also we, you can't really say that this that ryan net decked because it's mega mutual garbador like you the only thing you can do is play like the clay uh, not the clay the other espion. evolution espion um but there's nothing much you can do other than that i mean yeah, the list it's... is pretty much good or I, I wouldn't say perfect because no list is perfect but it's a really good list and changing something for for now doesn't seem to make any sense if you're not going to play espion yeah but speaking of espion we're going to have a deck with uh, travis none list he's going to play with espion and the difference between ryan stablehouse list and uh, travis off the bat is travis took out the one hex maniac and he took out a trainer's mail and he just fitted the one one uh, espion line i don't think there's much to talk about that but i think just espion's a really good counter to a mirror match that's space that's the only thing i think be, uh, pretty much I don't think um, Amit also, should, like, we should have walk over for pretty much. It's okay. Then. It's good in a special coin, yeah. But I don't think it's a deck we should walk over too much. Because it's just me yeah, too. I never know. It's... I actually like the SPN GX idea. I mean, it seems to make sense in a lot of ways. The first attack is actually pretty good. That's a pretty good first turn play if you can get that going. Because, like, um, imagine you confuse a Fright Knight. That should be pretty decent um also the gx attack as i said like against vespiquen you kill a combi you kill like a zorua to prize it for free basically you one shot the mu ah. there's a lot of applications for the espion actually but yeah other than that it's just the mutual deck it's strong it's consistent it's nothing special i think and it still loses to Ivata and if people especially if people start um playing the regular evolutions mewtwo that we're gonna see later in ego's list yeah so let's see i, I after that we have the mega request list with volcano nex I don't think we should walk over Volcano Rayquaza, but Volcano X, what is going on? Volcano <laughs> X, what is he playing that for? Yeah, I, like, okay, um, he, he explained it actually on Hey Fonta, I believe, and he just plainly said, Volcanion is to get your energy in the discard. Nothing else. So I yeah, so really well, don't know. Like yeah, he wants to turn one attack, and this way he can get the energies in the discard more reliably. Actually, pretty kind. Of, it's actually pretty kind of creative then. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting, and people were like praising him for the Volcano X idea. Actually, I don't really see the necessity for it. I think like you could, would get more value of a uh, maybe not a Magenia X, but um, George or the even the regular Magenia that gives you a chance against Rainbow Road. Even though Rainbow Road is kind of not yes. the um, most popular deck right now, still I think that's. A little bit better than random volcanic X, but I see his his point, and um, yeah, it's not like he just put it in for fun because like Ahmed Ali told him to put in volcanian and <laughs> the mega ray. But but it yeah. it made some sense. Let's say that. So we're just gonna continue on again. I I don't think there's much to talk about with mega ray. We got um. Next thing I'm actually going to look at is the Turbo Dark from Tony uh, Jimenez. He got second in Anaheim. And to a lot of surprises, he didn't play Taurus in his uh, Turbo Dark. He played one Lily, one Professor Kukui, one Team Flare Grunt, one Hex Maniac. That's his tech supporters. Uh, otherwise, the list looks really much like the list uh, used for Elite Cups for Turbo Dark without Garbodor. So... Go away, give it a shot. Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, as you said, it's very standard forward uh, list we already saw before. Um, I don't really like Lily because, well, if, you, if you're going, well, if it's your first turn, it can be useful at times, but usually Sycamore is just better. But I really like the Kukui because um, actually you found yourself in a lot of times where you're like, oh, if only I had a way to attach an additional energy and Kukui pretty much is your additional energy because he 
does 20 more damage, so I really like it. I also like Team Flare Grunt, I uh, used it as well in uh, my uh, Turbo Dark without Garbodor, so I really like this card. Yeah, and Hexmanic just made, makes sense without uh, Garbodor. Yeah, just gonna continue on to the next list. It's actually gonna be real, one of the, let's say, interesting lists from uh, Rahul. And I, I have to do this meme. What's up, guys? Rahul from Chaos Gym. Uh, but <laughs> he, he plays the Vespa Quinn with uh, with Eevee Lucians and Sorork. So I'm just gonna go over to Pokemon quickly. It's gonna be four four Vespa Quinn, two two Sorork, uh, two Eevee, one Jolteon, one Vaporeon, two Klefki, four Unknown, one Oranguru, one Taurus, one Mew EX, and three Shaman EX. All right. Um... Pretty good list, let's say that. Yeah. Uh, um, I think, I think this list is yeah. Obviously, this list is um kind of well thought through. Um, like for example, he plays the two revitalizer and the two forest of giant plant with uh giant plants, which is kind of a lot of synergy right there. Also, um, the Taurus is really good in the stack because you can just throw it up in some matchups. And you don't get knockouts because uh, either your opponent's gonna damage the Taurus, but not gonna knock it out, and you just take two prizes, or your opponent is gonna be afraid to uh, walk into the mad ball, so he just passes or tries to and play around it. But yeah. it's gonna take him a lot of time, and the more time you have for Vespiquen, the more Pokemon get into the discard pile. And if you give Vespiquen too much time, um, they're just gonna run over you. Also, I think the theme for this regional was cutting um, the Substrikers, which were popular before for the Zoroarks, which is kind of, um, it, it makes kind of a lot of sense because um, Substriker was there for the Velta matchup and the Mega Ray matchup, obviously. But the Mega Ray matchup is uh, still really, really good. And the Zoroarks do help in that as well. And there's an not as much volatile as there was when people started playing the striker and people figured out that you can still be Divalta because this deck is actually really strong. Um, he still plays the Jolteon, um, which kind of could counter some Ivalta players, but usually they're just going to get out Garbodor eventually, but uh, maybe for early turns the Jolteon helps in the Ivalta matchup as well. Um, the kind of the thing that kind of puzzles me in this deck is, or well, it doesn't puzzle me because it's actually usual, but um, what I would do differently is that I found out um, Octillery to be really good in Vespiquen decks. Um, so I definitely would play Octillery. I mean, it's like a better Oranguru, and you never want to bench Shamans. You, um, well, like, never want to bench Shamans. You want to bench Shamans to get a quick setup, but you don't want to keep them on field. So I really don't like the three shames to be honest because if I were to play the deck I would like just play one down if I need if I had to and then scary turn and use the artillery for the rest of the time that's how I would approach it like make your opponent draw like six prizes from six Pokemon other than just and not just give them a shaman to knock out in the, in the later turns even though you get some more speed in the early game I think that's a bad trade to make um so maybe I would cut down on the shamans a little and cut through Oranguru and try to fit in the artillery line because I found out this is a really good thing in this deck. But yeah, other than that, I really like the list. Also, what people um, uh, expect from Vespiquen is that it loses against um, Volcanion, but it's really not like that. Um, Volcanion... Uh, like, we can, can take a two prize advantage, and then you just go, like, um, take a prize on the baby Volcanion and just take three knockouts afterwards, and then you win. Like, if you can make that trade, you will win. Uh, the reporter run helps in this matchup, like, really much, because um, you only need it for one turn. Uh, like, the turn where you don't have all those Pokemon in the discard pile yet, and then you can use the Vaporeon to get the one-shot, and if your opponent knocks out the Vaporeon, well, you will get the one-shot anyway, because by then you will have a lot of Pokemon in, disc in the discard pile. So I think, especially with Zoroark, because it's kind of good against Volcanion 2, you have a kind of a decent Volcanion matchup, and overall good matchups. Maybe Turbo Darkrai with Garbodor could be a 
difficult one, but um, yeah, other than that, the, of course, Giotina decks um, are a huge problem for Vespiquen, and right now, um, seeing as Giotina won the regional, probably it's pretty risky to run Vespiquen right now for Sheffield, I think, but I really like the deck, and um, but still, I don't think there's a way to deal with Giratina for the moment. Like, a good way to deal with Giratina. Yeah, there actually are plenty of ways to deal with Giratina, but you would have to sacrifice way too much consistency or other tech cards, because obviously you can run two, yeah, three, no even four anyway. enhance them. It's obviously an option, but you just won't do it. Yeah, you can run basic energies and uh, Girachi, but it's just not worth for maybe hitting one yeah, or two Giratinas. To cut a lot of consistency just doesn't well, make sense. I'd rather just take the loss against Scrutina. That's yeah. that's easier. Yeah, if I were to play the deck, I would take the loss against Scrutina or play something wacky like I don't know Skarmory, but yeah, you need to still attach the DC. Yeah, it's... yeah, Scrutina is gonna be a loss, but well. any anyways, uh, what you're saying, Philip, actually kind of puzzles me because I think if I was to play Vespiquen. I'll play just a one, one one split of five, four giant plants and Peril City. I made my list uh, an hour ago, and I have like three cards difference. I don't play Ranguru. I play Deferred Klefki. I play one one split of Peril City and four giant plants. I play uh, one floatstone, and I play one teammates. Um, when I played the stack at my League Cup, um, I won. I mean, I played the stack at the League Cup, and I won with it, so. I wouldn't say I have that great experience with the deck, but I um, tested it quite a lot by now, and I think I know what I'm talking about. And teammates could come up, so teammates might be a worthwhile addition, even though I don't, I, even though I think there are better cards in this deck. But um, actually, I would only play one stadium, and therefore no Parasity, because you can play only one Parasity, and maybe more Pokemon overall. But yeah. um, I think uh, if you're not going to play um, the uh, Octillery, you kind of should play the Oranguru. Because that's or, still a or, nice or out to the you, in the late game. Shamans. Yeah, yeah, of course. But you still should play uh, one of Oranguru so you can like um, draw off, uh, out of the late game. And it's because that's also a quite common way to lose with West Bitcoin. Third clap key isn't really necessary right now. You get a lot of Pokemon in this card quite quickly anyway. Um, two clap key are sufficient against Mega Dex. So yeah. I think uh, kind of the changes are all right. But um, yeah, other than cutting the Oranguru, you could do that. I think. Still has to be tested through, though. Let's say that. Yeah, um, yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah, let's just move on. We, we know Vespa Quinn, though. So let's go on. Well... Yeah, we're going to have the last deck of today. It's probably going to be the Igor Costa Eveltal Garbodor deck. He's going to want four Eveltal EX. We like that. One Fright Knight Eveltal EX. One Taurus GX. One Mewtwo from Evolutions. Ooh. <laughs> and two, two Garbodor and two Shaman. No, it's actually two, one Garbodor. Yeah, that is actually wrong. Put in, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the other card is. Yeah. Wembo Whatever. did a bad job. <laughs> God sakes, uh, Charizard Lounge. Was put in wrong. Please. Shout out yeah. to Charizard Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, one it has to be um, one of. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's. And he played nine dogs, of course. Yeah, yeah so it's, 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 it's the dog. One yeah. dog for one Garbodor. There we go. But what's interesting is this, he actually plays very close to mine. I like that a lot. Um, he doesn't play four floodstones like a EU, EU list, which. It's kind of bad when he's from Portugal himself, so what the fuck, Igor? Um, and then he plays, of course, a 2-1 Garbodor. Kind of sufficient because there's not much Garbodor has to lock. But other than that, he plays quite standard. But the only thing out of the ordinary is usually is the Mewtwo from Evolutions. I think it's just a, a way he wanted to answer uh, Mewtwo decks because he can Fright Knight Mewtwo once. And if he has free energies attached... He can use the Mewtwo from Evolutions, and you get a 2 at KO on that. So that's pretty good. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I actually think this list is very nice. Um, I have been talking to Philip, like Philip Schulz, uh, a lot recently about Evelton in the current format. 
And I also talked to him about uh, Chuan Garbodor and adding the second shaman, Ninja Boy Taurus, all the stuff you actually consider a lot with the new set. So I probably wrote, uh, would run the exact list right now. Maybe one or two differences, but I'm actually a very big fan of this list. Enhanced Stamma PCL, is... PCL, dude. PCL's really I, good. I, yeah, PCL obviously is very good, but... <laughs> you can what, put what in I, your PCL bullshit later, just let him talk. <laughs> but what, what, are you, what are you going to cut for it? Even more consistency? Enhanced Stamma. I don't like it. Yeah, but Enhanced Stamma is like super good. Especially, especially now Enhanced Stamma is good. Especially in the mirror and like, like with all the with now with Giratina coming up. Yeah. Giratina coming. I, I wouldn't call Giratina coming up. It's like it won a region, like, but Giratina is like one. It makes sense in the current format. Yeah, but Giratina is um, Giratina is like a very. If you are playing enhanced Tema, you're playing them now. Giratina is like a very bad card um, for an uh, a meta where you expect Giratina, pretty much the same as Vylord. If you expect these cards to do well in the tournament, they won't be good. But take a look at Robin's results with Giratina. He stopped playing Giratina at the right times and started picking it up again at the right time. That's why he got all the good results with Giratina. But for now, I think Gir playing Giratina is very risky because if people start playing Jirachi again, if people add Enhanced Stamma again, you saw it after Robin um, made top 4 in Essen and top 4 in at Liverpool Regionals, a lot of people started running to Enhanced Stamma in Vulcanian, a lot of people started running Jirachi in Ivelta. So I think Giratina was very good for um, Anaheim, but for Sheffield and the uh, International Melbourne, I wouldn't call Giratina that bad, uh, that good of a meta. You want to play West Big Sons, right? <laughs> oh. I would actually, <laughs> in Melbourne, I would actually just play Evaltal, or I would actually play uh, Taurus, Giratina, Lugia, Garbodor. Right. Uh, Still, I want to say something about the list, uh, though, sure. from Iga, first off, so then we can talk about the matter a bit, but I still want to give my kind of two cents <laughs> on this list. Um, yeah, uh, of course, um, we are used to playing for Floatstone over here in Germany, but... Uh, um, I'm Danish, dude. We have, we have, to, <laughs> we have to see you. Yeah, but, but you just copied us, but you just copied us. <laughs> Or you, like, like uh, usually people just is tell... the German invention, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> people just say Denmark is a German province, and that's not nice. No, no, I'm not saying that. Um, but yeah, I definitely put in the four floats in again. I think that's way too um, important. I don't know how much value Ninja Boy gets in the testing that we've done recently. It was kind of underwhelming. I mean, it made your games that you won anyway easier wins, but it didn't really change the game in your favor. So maybe I'd cut a ninja boy. I'm not sure. Also missing nest balls in this list. I think nest ball is one of the strongest cards that Ivata got. But um, just for consistency reasons, don't know if Mewtwo is really necessary, even though it, of course, uh, makes the Mewtwo matchup, the Mega Mewtwo matchup really good. But I'm not sure if it's necessary. The two on Garbodor line is debatable. I think for this matter it was fine. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. This list looks kind of consistent. I like the four Ivelta. Um, I like the inclusion of Rise Knight for now. Um, but yeah, other than maybe putting in some nest balls and the fourth world stone, um, probably wouldn't change too much. Also, I would only play one Shaman, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Because one Shaman is. Kind of like uh, in the stack, you really don't need more than one shaman. Like people always say, but what if you start with it? What if it's priced? Oh my god! Like actually, this percentage is really low, and there's a. Uh, I mean, the second shaman doesn't really get as much value as the first does, and kind of could be a liability because it sometimes makes you just dig and miss and. You you actually actually your percentage wise is like really big to start with shaman. It's probably something like I think fifteen percent, twenty percent because you ha you either have the percentage of pricing it, ten percent, plus the percentage of starting with it. So Yeah, but still um I will i I'll still even, play two even when you're starting with it, the premise is that you're starting with it, you're pricing it, and you're dead drawing. And you have an ultra ball. 
Like, you know, only then the second shaman is really effective for the opening hand. You of course, seven it's, good supporters. In the mid -game. It's, it's clearly possible to have and happen a lot. Yeah, still, um, um, I'd rather play uh, a third trainer as me or something that seems to get more value. But, but yeah, um, of course, this list is very successful and um, it's still quite consistent. Um, but there's always things that you can change in, the, in, in an Evelta list. It's nothing set in stone, except for, of course, some things are. But um, you can always make some minor changes, I think. And this list is obviously really good. But, yeah, yeah, so so what do you think, Nico? About what? <laughs> uh, just about the list in total, like... Uh... Yeah. Just so to, fin to finish really this chat it. off, we just want to want your uh, your. Uh, Actually, let's also. let's just talk quickly about the Sheffield meta because we want to, like, oh, impact yeah. the Sheffield meta by telling our viewers what to play there. <laughs> Guys, please, 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 everybody, just play Lorenz's Wild Plum. <laughs> what? Yeah, just, just play Lorenz. No, just it's just really everyone play Giratina, Quad Giratina, nothing really. else, so I can play my fine hand Sam and Girachi and. Win every and game. be like, screw you guys, I got the win. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, well, no, no, actually, what do you think, like, in Sheffield, what do you think will uh, still be good? But what kind of decks from this tournament should fade out for Sheffield? Do you have any uh, fancy new ideas for Sheffield <laughs> um, that you want to share right now? I, I think the format's gonna, probably just going to be the same. Uh, the meta's just going to shift a bit over to Veltal. I think that if Veltal attacks the right stuff, it, it can definitely beat Turbo Dark. Um, we're, it, like, people just probably expect us to be playing like 5 to 6 Veltal decks uh, for uh, teammates going. Because Limless equals Veltal. So, evil tall boys. I actually think it's not about the meta fading or stuff like this because um No, I like past, only past a few regionals. decks like Vespiquen. Yeah sure, but past regionals from America, sure they have had an a certain effect on European regionals. But Europeans have a different mindset going into tournaments. What we can actually see by uh which decks won the European regionals. We have two Mega Rayquaza and one Rainbow Force. So we can clearly see that a lot of Europeans are going for these straightforward, so-called no-brain decks to... Uh, where we don't have any brains. We're dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As, as Americans yeah, always call us. No. Yeah. But uh, seriously, so um, Europeans, I feel like Europeans' mindset is um, le less good players, less, let's call them this, um, are playing like brainless decks like Vileplume variants and uh, it, uh, Rainbow Force and uh, Mega Rayquaza and the good players are playing consistent versions of the top meta decks so I don't really see Vespiquen being uh, a top con contester for European regionals because it's not a brainless deck for the first few turns well obviously at some point you will just one shot everything but you have to uh, think actually a lot more than you have with Mega Ray or Rainbow Force. Yeah, um, Andy Veltal is, as you already said, um, a very big deck in Europe, so I, I actually think the meta will differ a lot from the top 16 or top 32 meta game in Anaheim, but obviously um, people will take stuff like Giratina and Turbo Dark um, and Vespiquen as well into their consideration when building the deck. But um, I don't really, as I said, I don't really um, see Vespiquen as a top contestant. Yeah, maybe maybe Vespiquen will be played by a few good players. But uh, actually, I think the bad players that are going to pick up Vespiquen, they are just going to like flat out lose anyway. <laughs> I mean, there's no way for a bad player to win with Vespiquen, in my opinion. No, it, it's uh, actually the more difficult deck to play. Yeah, uh, one of the more difficult decks, of course, but um, it really doesn't uh, fit in the criteria of the European top players that are playing those consistent, like Darkrai or um, Evil Evelta Tal. decks as well. Like Darkrai and Evelta are always really popular, but um, these kind of decks, 
yeah, are very different from West Pikmin. I don't know how many are going to play this deck, especially with um, Darker Giratina winning the regional in Anaheim. I mean, that's also like a really huge turn off for West Pikmin players because they're going to think, oh my god, this deck won. I mean, all those noobs could just pick it up because it's really easy to play. It's not really hard to get these cards, maybe except Salamence, but even Salamence. <laughs> really easy to get actually and it's not hard to play so and there were kind of these few darker Giratina Garbodor players in Europe anyway so now they are going to play this deck again and a lot of more players so Vespiquen should uh, be a deck that won't see much play in Sheffield um, what do you think about Mewtwo? I don't really know where to put Mewtwo in the Sheffield meta right now it's it's I don't think it will it'll do great. But I guess for now it's just up to whatever the players decide to play. We can have a big surprise. I don't think something like Waylord's gonna go in. So I think that's a good way to end this really because the meta for Sheffield is so fucked up right now. If that's so. that's at least what I think. Like any yeah. deck can have a shot at winning, yeah, I but... think. This has been the entire time, so... Yeah. This is just Pokemon. I mean, like, like, let's go back to 2009, 10, something like that. SP just won every single event. So where we go. I mean, at least now we have kind of a good idea what uh, the good decks actually are. We have some interesting and pretty good lists. We have some interesting tech ideas. We also have, like, people like Mass Printing My Day that are always thinking that... Uh, already thinking a step ahead and playing things like Taurus and Tina Garbodor, even though I don't see that being really good against Dark Decks. But now we kind of know what we can expect. And I think if you guys that are watching, if you're playing a deck that you like and you're playing a deck that you can play well and it's consistent, then you should be okay for Sheffield. Yeah. You got any fin uh, finishing commentaries? Just Nico? don't play Green Ninja. Yeah, Just guys, <laughs> don't play Green Ninja. <laughs> Ninja. Stop playing Green Ninja. Whatever uh, the... How is he called? Uh, Drew Bennett uh, Kenneth tells you, don't yeah, play or, this Yeah, or Graph and Roll. Don't play... Never like play Green Ninja. Or finishing, roll, or finishing words. Don't play Green Ninja. Exactly. Yeah. As well, then I'll... Uh, I'll just uh, do the outro here. Uh, I would like to thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitch, please. Limitless, uh, Limitless TCG. Um, we are on uh, Facebook as well, and we're Limitless TCG. So thank you guys for watching, and you have a great day. Bye. Bye. See ya.